Why would I sign up for this when TriHack Me and Hack the Box exist for a fraction of the price? My name is Josh Matacor. I'm a cybersecurity professional. I've helped a whole bunch of people break into the field. And recently I built and released an open cyber range for my community to use. And inside the cyber range, there's many enterprise licensed security tools that you'll actually like see out in the wild if you go to work. A bunch of courses around those that teaches you how to use them. And then there's also an optional internship component at the end that you can do to get experience for your resume and LinkedIn. People have been asking me like why would i get this one try hack me and hack the box exist which those are both really good products but they're like completely different from the cyber range but i'm just going to kind of compare and contrast them in this video and then point people to this video when they ask me in the future I'm really, really open about everything really and really transparent. So I'm going to do my best to like tell everything as it is and just be open and give you all the information that you might want. But if I'm leaving anything out, feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll be sure to answer it. So I'm just gonna start off and just start comparing these like right off the bat. So the Cyber Range, which is mine, is $97 a month. Um, it's slightly cheaper if you buy it by the year. And then Try Hack Me is $14 a month. Hack the Box is $14 a month. And these are also slightly cheaper if you get like a yearly subscription for them. So getting into what the environment actually is, like mine, which is the cyber range, it's basically like an open work environment. It's designed to be exactly or really close to what you'd see when you start working. Like if you get credentials and you log into Azure, which is a cloud platform, and there's a bunch of uh, enterprise licensed security tools that my company, like we license all of those and pay for it on the back end. And then you join and then you get credentials to like um, Azure as well as Tenable vulnerability management. We also licensed uh, Defender for Endpoint and Microsoft Sentinel, and then the other stuff that comes along with Azure, of course. And then you have this relatively open environment where you're basically an admin over your own resources and you have near admin access and tenable, like the vulnerability management platform. You have scan manager access, so you can create and do like any kind of vulnerability scans in there and you can create any kind of virtual machine in terms of like the operating system. You can query alerts in the SIM, which is security information event management system. You can do endpoint detection and response with Defender for Endpoint. You can create alerts for all of these things. You can just pretty much operate like a, a normal security analyst would. And then you can do a bunch of other stuff as well, like relating to vulnerability management and stake implementation and whatever you can pretty much think of because you have admin access over your own virtual machine. And then there's courses that teach you like the basics of how to use each tool. So you go through the course and then you use the environment and you go through the, the next course and then you use the environment and then you get an intuition for how things work. Try Hack Me and Hack the Box. Um, they're really, really good products, but um, it's typically like more closed off. And instead of like a really open environment that's like really corporate, um, instead of like trying to mimic the real work environment that you might get into when you start working, the way I view them is uh, there's like hundreds, there's like hundreds of practice scenarios that you can do. They'll, they'll give you like a scenario and then you have to like kind of figure out how to solve the scenario. And it kind of reminds me of, it reminds me of Lee code, but for cybersecurity uh, a bit. Do I imagine try hack me and hack the box? It's like you're fine tuning like certain skills instead of like trying to do some like holistic approach that that makes you like uh, employable right away. They're really good platforms, but it's just like completely different than what the cyber range is. And then as far as like connecting to them, like to connect to resources in the cyber range, we use like RDP for the virtual machines, as well as like Azure Bastion for the virtual machines. Like don't worry about what that is as well. It's a web interface. Um, try hack me and hack the box. Um, a lot of their stuff is a nice, pretty like web interface where you interact with their product. And then sometimes you'll, you can, or you will use a, a VPN to connect to the virtual machines. And then the actual content of it, the cyber range has like three large courses that teach like uh, vulnerability management. Uh, general security operations, threat hunting, and then there's like a, an internship class component, which I'll talk about in a second. And then try Hack Me uh, and Hack the Box. From what I, I researched, they have like over 700 like individual practice labs that you can do, but they're kind of like closed off and they're for like really specific things. It's really high quality. Um, but they're for like really specific things, right? And as far as internship goes, um, the cyber range has an optional internship component where you can either, you can choose from doing vulnerability management tasks, threat hunting, tabletop scenarios, general cybersecurity support uh, for other users if they run into problems. If you provide like a solution for them, you can get credit for that. 
You can also get credit for a general cyber range maintenance. There's been some times where I had to like do something with the infrastructure and back end of the cyber range and a student has actually helped me with it. So I gave them credit for it. And then there's like kind of other scenarios too. Like somebody is interested in audit. Like if you're interested in getting experience for some certain thing that's not outlined in the internship module, you can always like DM me. And if I have something that you can do that I was planning to do, I can give that to you and then you can do it and kind of get internship credit for it. As far as I know, like try Hack Me and Hack the Bucks. They don't have this, but they do offer services for students to help um, find opportunities or help them be able to network better. And they, they try to like do something other than just like give you skill and like hand the student off. But it's hard because the difference between like me um, the cyber range and then try hack me and hack the box is I have like a, a small community who I will like personally interact with and, and do all of all kinds of things to like work with you but they're just like really really big like corporate thing and I don't think they they probably don't want to do stuff that's like not scalable or like too many like one-off things I try not to do that either because it's like not really good business practice but um, I decided to limit the cyber range to like a thousand members for now. Um, part, this is partially due to uh, limitations on the Azure infrastructure. Like in one subscription, you can't have over 960 resource groups, for example. And then we have like a hard quota for our virtual machines and compute of like 920 or something like this. So I, I'm not gonna let the community go over over a thousand. So this will allow me to be like more personal and do customized one-off stuff, uh, if that makes sense. In terms of like accountability and like direct access, um, it's a bit different, right? Because I'm one person. It's not like really fair to compare me to the like hack the box and stuff because I'll, I'll do like a, a weekly i do like two live streams weekly one for like the free community and like youtube and everybody and then i do another two hour live stream for like only people in the cyber range and then um, that one's like more technical and like more personal and people can like talk to me like directly and like join with their camera and stuff um, obviously you cannot do that with like try hack me and hack the box because like who, who are you going to talk to there's like a big community and students probably make like little niche groups inside of there um but it's i can't really be like see i'm i'm doing this and they're not but because they're like a big company like what what can i say right as far as like community size like currently the cyber range has like a 353 users in it um try hack me is like 4 million right hack the box has like 2 million i cannot really compare them right and the, the stuff that i'm doing inside of the cyber the cyber range it it kind of carries like a lot of liability um, because it's it's kind of open like the student has like admin access over their virtual machine there's like a eula like a license agreement that i make you sign or whatever like don't do computer trespass and like don't do all this bad stuff um, but the cyber range it's like a work environment it's like a literal work environment and i designed it for people who will like have some cybersecurity like acumen but they need to bridge the gap between like having some skill and like actually landing a job and the environment and the portfolio and stuff we build in there helps with that as well as like the um, internship component. It's just hard for Try Hack Me and Hack the Box to do what I'm doing. It's it's gonna make a lot of labor for them because their audience is like too big, right? Pretty much the cyber range is it's for my audience. Or it's for people who know me and they like me and they trust me enough to like give me their money to manage their products. I don't run like paid ads or anything like this. All my thing is like really organic. And then I, I work closely with the people inside the cyber range. And the whole point of that, the whole point of the cyber range is to get people used to what they're going to do in real life, help them to convey that on their resume and their applications and their portfolio, and then help them prepare for the interview and then you know help them like get hired ASAP essentially. And I, my methodology on this is to like really like get people working as soon as possible because like once you're working that's when you really like get those like experience that helps your resume and helps you to be employable and i don't like to teach people um while it's really useful to teach people like a broad spectrum of stuff i tend to like really laser focus on the stuff that the corporate world expects you to know or wants you to know or the hiring manager expects you to know or wants you to know so i really like laser focus on those things and that there's a reason like i went in intentionally got like tenable for the vulnerability management platform because it's like 
the most used vulnerability management platform like ever anywhere like according to Gartner and if you look on Google Trends and if you look in like uh, Indeed it's just it has the most hits everywhere and I teach incident response because that's like everywhere like ubiquitous everywhere we use a sim as well as EDR solution um, because these are things like if you search in Indeed right sim EDR vulnerability management there's like a ton of hits for all of this stuff and it's kind of like I don't want to say mainstream but it's kind of like the main like mainstream like cybersecurity function like security operations and then you can always like take those skills and like pivot into like governance or, or something like this because you understand risk and you understand like security operations so that's what kind of why i built the cyber range in the way that i did so in terms of pricing uh, i'll talk to you about like why the cyber range is 97 dollars. that's really cheap by the way for like what it is basically um to operate the cyber range it costs money on the background right because i have to pay for like the azure subscription uh tenable subscription which is not cheap by the way the tenable license defender for endpoint the compute spend which is part of the azure subscription and then uh basically the log ingestion uh for the sim like sending logs to the aggregate to the sim that costs money but it depends on like how much you send really so basically the virtual machine that you're allowed to provision, everybody's allowed to have one virtual machine at a time. You can destroy it and make another one later, but the virtual machine at a minimum will cost $51 per month. If if you let it run like indefinitely, it will end up costing me $51 a month. Defender for Endpoint, which is the EDR solution. Like if you look on Indeed for EDR, a bunch of hits will come out. Um, that thing is $15 a month per virtual machine or per student. Like if you have your virtual machine running, that's another $15 per month. Tenable licensing is for the current amount of licensing it was like $5,800 a year, 5,800 per year. And like tenable licensing only for like 150 licenses. I just added a bit more later. I need to add like a lot more licenses and this is gonna get like quite a bit more expensive. It's probably gonna be around like 10k in the next couple of months because i just launched the, the cyber range but for now for like 150 licenses it was like 5800 dollars per year right and then divide that by you know 12 for months that's like you know another 483 dollars a month and then think about like a bit of extra like it's not really easy to measure but every student is going to cost a bit extra because they're good everyone generates logs in the cyber range and it needs to be ingested into the sim and that just like costs a bit of extra money as well so around like if you really calculate it probably around each student like the maximum spend per student is probably around like 80 to 90 dollars or something like this it's possible to go over a hundred dollars if you're really like moving a lot of data and the the vm is on all the time luckily no one does this um so this maybe this makes sense like why i price this high range like around 97 dollars a month um, I was going to increase it, um, but I'm going to wait until the end of Q1 to think about increasing it. I'm just going to, I'm just letting people join now and then kind of measuring the infrastructure and making sure it doesn't crash. But if you're wondering if the internship component works with it, it, it definitely does work. I probably do about one employment verification for a week where like Hire Right or one of those third party companies reaches out to me to verify the internships um, experience. And it literally works. I keep track of everyone who gets hired by that because I know who gets hired because the the company will reach out to me so i record it whenever that happens and then i have this page where we record all of the past internships who have got hired so you can click on these individual people and then you can see in their linkedin profile my company like login pacific internship and then you can see like the company where they got hired afterwards it like literally actually works i just think my my product is like too much it's too different than like try hack me and hack the box and this is not a zero sum game anyways by zero sum i mean like it's not like I'm gonna get all the customers or I'm gonna prevent you from going to hack the box because the same customer can like, you know, the same person can get all three products and like a bunch of other products too if they want. It's not a zero sum game and they, they're they mutually like, or not mutually, but they're both like really useful. Try hack me and hack the box help you develop hard skills. And a lot of those are try hack me and hack the box. I wanna say like, you know, generally it sounds like they're kind of a red team or offensive security focus, but they do have some defensive stuff in there. And even if they were like purely red team, they're gonna be useful for doing defensive stuff too. Cause that's how I learned to do defensive stuff. I tried really hard um, with OSCP. I was studying for that really hard. And because I was like, I want to be a pen tester like everyone everyone else. And I was practicing on it really hard. And when I, I ended up eventually getting a, like a blue team or a defensive interview and I talked about what I did with my OSCP studies and how it helped me to like 
really understand why patch management and like risk and everything is important. The, the CISO, or the chief information security officer was like, oh wow, this guy like knows what he's talking about. And I just got hired based on that. So even there, if, if they're offensive, like try Acme and hack the boxer can still be useful for defensive jobs, which is what most of the jobs are. And then my platform, it just like gets you used to working in like an actual real environment where you can like actually mess stuff up for other people if you try to be malicious. Like it's, it's like that on purpose. No one has done that so far on purpose. Um, but they could probably if they wanted to, but it's intentional. It's like, it's like a work environment where everyone shares the same environment. Um, and I, I really like white glove that thing. There's like a lot of, uh, maintenance and interaction on, on my end. So it's like really different. There are two like completely different things. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to answer that. If you have any more questions, just like, let me know. I'm transparent about literally everything. So you can ask me like whatever you want. Uh, but yeah, hope this helps and we will see you in the next video.